The Accelerator was the first gem tower in TDS, and since its release, it has remained one of the best, and at times, the best DPS tower in the game. Until now. As more and more DPS options enter the game through reworks, balance changes, and completely new towers, people have been saying for a good amount of time now that the Accelerator is falling behind. But is this actually true? Let's find out by comparing it to every viable DPS unit currently in the game. Before we start though, I must note that any DPS calculated includes the Commander's 50% fire rate buff and the DJ's 20% damage buff. It's highly unlikely that you aren't using these in your matches, so I will be including them as a given in calculating Tower's DPS. I'm not really factoring in detections too much either, so anyways, let's get back to it. Let's first start with the turret. The turret's max total DPS with the Commander and DJ is 2250, and it has a pretty insane range of almost 30 with DJ's 12.5% range buff. It also has no charge up or complicated mechanics, it is just raw DPS which makes it very reliable beside the fact that it has no stun immunity. With a placement limit of 3 as well, the limit being pretty low gives you more tower slots to use too. Comparing this to Accelerator's 3200 max DPS, the Accelerator at first seems better, but you also have to factor the Accelerator's annoying charge up, slower range of 22.5, and much higher placement limit of 8. Even if the Accelerator has almost 50% more max DPS than the turret, it is also a good amount more expensive, with the turrets being around 300k to get them all down, and the Accelerators being around 400k. It's a close battle, but I'll give the edge to the turret here. It is just much more reliable in so many situations, that even if Accelerator has that much more DPS than it, it just gets cancelled out by the other factors. So, there we go, Accelerator has already lost one. Next, let's analyze the Ranger. The Ranger has a max DPS of 2289 when all of them are placed down. It has map range and complete stun immunity as well. There is also slight splash DPS that helps it out as well, along with the 7 placement limit. It also costs around 360 to max out, about $70,000 cheaper than the Accelerator. The Accelerator with its 3200 DPS, limited range, lack of stun immunity, slightly higher placement limit, and higher cost, make this a situation similar to the turret. Even if it has a lot more DPS, there are just so many things helping the Ranger here that, yet again, the Ranger wins. So, the Accelerator is now lost too. Now, with the Pursuit getting reworked soon, this segment may be invalidated soon, but let's just compare it to the Pursuit. The Pursuit's max DPS is around 2737, and its range is pretty big, but the targeting is unreliable at times, so I'll give the point of range to the Accelerator this time. However, the Pursuit does also have stun immunity. With the Pursuit costing around 450k to max out, it's actually a little bit more expensive than the Accelerator as well. And the conclusion? I'm actually giving this round a draw. The Accelerator has more reliable range, more DPS, and is cheaper, but the Pursuit's stun immunity and overall bigger range are pluses to it as well. So it really just depends on the situation for this one. Now what about the Golden Minigunner? The Golden Minigunner's max DPS is an insane 5,837, the highest max total DPS of a tower in the game. But there are a lot of drawbacks to this. The placement limit of 15 is super high, leaving little room for other tower slots and placement on map. There's no stun immunity, it costs 570k to max them all out, and they even have a lower range of only about 20 with the DJ. Comparing this to the Accelerator, what is better? I'd say it's a draw yet again. On certain maps and in lower player counts, the Golden Minigunner can do wonders for the player with this insane amount of DPS, but the Accelerator's higher range and lower placement limit prove more reliable on harder maps than higher player counts. It yet again depends on the situation, so there's another draw for the Accelerator. But how about the famous rival to the Accelerator? The only other hardcore tower for a long time, the Engineer. Well, there's not really a competition here. The Engineer has a max DPS of 2730, which is lower than the Accelerator, but the Engineer costs 320,000, which is about 100,000 cheaper than the Accelerator, has more versatility from early to late game, for the most part has stun immunity, it has a lower placement limit, and I mean it does have a slightly lower range, but there are just so many great things about the Engineer that the Accelerator does not have, that it is, without a doubt, the better DPS option. On the topic spawn of towers, what about the newly reworked Golden Crook boss? Well, the max DPS is a bit harder to calculate, but for the base DPS it is about 1,621. And for the minions, they are pretty unreliable, but let's assume there's at least one on the map attacking at a time. That would mean we have 100 DPS, no, about 111 DPS guards, 
and the 5 DPS card for each crook, being about an extra 116 DPS for each crook. Then, with 5 crooks, that's 580 extra DPS, meaning if we add 1621 from the base DPS and the 580, we have a total max DPS of 2200. Max DPS? 2200. Again, a rough estimate, hard to calculate the Golden Crook boss's max DPS, but there you have it. Anyways, enough with that segment. The Golden Crook boss is actually pretty cheap to get maxed out, only being 194k total, but it also has a pretty low range and is threatened a lot by stuns that also kill its minions. Due to just the unreliability here of the Golden Crook boss, I do have to say that the Accelerator is the better DPS option here for once. Now, just two more to compare before we're done with this. The Brawler and the new Gatling Gun. For the Gatling Gun, I don't think it really needs to be compared at the moment. The Gatling Gun is no judgment the best DPS in the game right now. But what about the Brawler? Calculating the DPS for this one was pretty challenging as well, but the final number I came up with was that its total combo does 600 damage, and it can complete this combo after about 0.682 seconds with a cooldown of 0.5. So 600 damage every 1.182 seconds would be a DPS of 507.6, and with 6 Brawlers its total DPS would be 3045.6. A rough estimate, but that's actually pretty close to the Accelerator's max DPS. Anyways, let's also assume that since the brawler is a melee tower, it but it can be relocated, let's say that it's attacking bosses maybe 60% of the time. I mean, it depends on how fast the boss moves, but let's say it's just attacking bosses 60% of the time and its boss DPS is 1800. So anyways, with the DPS out of the way, there are also many pros to the brawler, like stun immunity, knockback, a cheaper max price of 165,000, a smaller placement hitbox, technically infinite range, and a somewhat low placement limit of 6. There's also the fact that you won't have to spend money to micro it when needed, which is awesome too. With that many pros of the brawler, I think even if its boss DPS can be low, I think it's safe to say that it's definitely better than the Accelerator. So, out of those 8 DPS towers, the Accelerator was better than 1, the Golden Crook boss, it tied with 2, being the Pursuit and Golden Minigunner, but it was beat by 5, being the Turret, Ranger, Engineer, Gatling Gun, and Brawler. Now answering the question from the title, has Accelerator actually fallen off in TDS? Yes, yes it has. Even if it has one of the highest max total DPS's in the game, it is just outshined by towers with stuff like larger range, stun immunity, and other mechanics. If you disagree though, feel free to leave a comment about it down below explaining why, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out guys, have a good day.